gain staging. What is it? Why do you care? Why is it important to you? Why is it important to understand it within uh, within your musical structure? Gain staging allows you to basically understand where your sound uh, starts off, how it travels through the architecture of either your hardware or your software. In this instance, we're looking at Ableton. So you understand where your sound is generated, how it's generated, where it goes next within the chain and where it goes after that and so on. Gain staging is about controlling volume. It's about controlling uh, your signal. And if you're able to control your signal throughout the whole chain of Ableton, your signal will be cleaner. It will work better for uh, mixing and mastering and your overall sound will be much better, whether you're working with audio or whether you're working with an instrument with an Ableton, or even if you're recording something in externally, gain staging is vital in every aspect of making music. And um, as I say, I can't stress enough uh, that this is, you know, this is one of the most important things that you will learn. And if you, you know, spend the next, uh, you know, 20, 30 minutes learning as much as you can, um, it will definitely help you, uh, you know, finish music, mix music, and potentially, you know, have a really good mix to be sent off to be mastered and, and then for it to be mastered uh, and, and completed. So uh, there's a number of things that you need to use. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use a track that I have been working on. Um, well, it's, it's, it's a track that I've been working on the last six months and kind of forgot about it, to be honest with you. So I've just pulled it up here because I haven't done any gain staging on this just yet. So I think it'll be a good example. So we'll basically go through and gain stage this. And uh, basically what we'll do is we'll find out uh, which parts of this track uh, is actually generating a high signal and potentially a distorted signal, a dis distorted sound. And what we'll do is we'll bring those levels down at the source rather than bringing them down throughout uh, the track. You know, for example, if I have a look here at uh, the drums, which is channel three, I'm sitting at minus four decibels and I'm able to check that here. Uh, this is a live readout of the actual uh, amplitude of this particular channel and the highest amplitude is minus 2.31. So I know that if I take this uh, back to zero decibels, I'm going to be over. Um, you, the maximum that you want to be at here is zero dB. And if it goes over zero, this will light up yellow. And it means that this channel is clipping. It's not good, um, apparently. You can clip each and every one of these channels, um, but then basically once that goes to the master, you're you're sending your master uh, a very very hot signal, a very very uh, distorted signal essentially. So um, because basically think about it this way: how many channels do I have in this track? Fourteen channels, and basically what's happening is Ableton will sum all of these amounts up and then put them through this one channel. So you've got fourteen volumes. Um, get into this one stereo mix. So you need to make sure that you give yourself enough headroom throughout all of these channels so when it goes to your master that there is uh, enough headroom there for you to work with. Now headroom is basically the difference, well it's basically how much room that you have left before you get to zero decibels. Now if I go in here to the master I have, uh, I have no effects other than an EQ and it's just a spectral analyzer so um, if you have anything in here, what I would suggest that you do is to turn it off to follow this tutorial. Um, because what we want to do is I want I want to get this, say, say this track's pretty much finished and I want to mix it now and make sure that all of my levels are really nice. They're, they're as nice as they can be without any distortion. And uh, I also want to make sure that basically I've given myself uh, minus six decibels of headroom here in the master track. So then when I send this to be mastered, um, the engineer basically has enough to work with. So that's a rough guide as to what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. Um, so what we'll do now is we'll go into each one of these channels and basically look at, um, you know, what I have and what I have not done. So if we look first of all at the drums, instantly, as I say, this is at minus four decibels. So I would double click uh, the fader. So it puts it back to zero. And then I would go into the drums and actually look at each one of these and see exactly um, what I need to do. So if I 
basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a pen and a piece of paper and write down minus uh, four decibels. So I have to take four decibels off each one of these channels here. Um, now I don't do it here. I actually do it within the instrument itself here. And that's something that you need to be aware of because basically the uh, fader channels and all of these tracks, um, it, it you know it's taken down the volume that you hear, but it's not taken down the volume that's sent to the master. Um, so you need to be aware of that. So if you think just taking the volume down here or here will fix the uh, the signal that's going to your master, it actually won't. Um, so it's very very important that you're aware of that. Um, so yeah, let, let's fix this. Let's go to the drums first of all. So if we look at the drums, and we'll just solo those for a second. Okay, so drums, and let's have a listen. So already I'm clipping because I took, I took off four decibels. So what I need to do is take uh, four plus the minus three that's here, which is seven decibels, okay? Um, so if I double click on that, That'll reset it to zero. And then I go in and I take minus seven off this. So it's already at minus 23.1. So that's minus 30.1 decibels. Okay, so that'll even everything out. Um, now what I might do is, so that's minus seven off that one. So I know now um, what I'll do is, well, do you know what? I'll keep it simple for now. Um, I'll go on to the next one. That's minus 5.2. Uh, 5.2 plus the original 4 is minus 9.2. So minus 9.2 plus minus 16. Um, basically, it's good to have a wee calculator here as well when you're doing this, just to make sure that uh, you do put the right amount in. And again, make sure that you actually, um, uh, that you put a minus in there or else you'll give yourself a very sore ear. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, minus 4 plus... Uh, 5.2, so that was minus 9.2. So I'll go minus 9.2, and then what is it? Um, minus 16. So that, oh, minus 9.2, uh, 16. Okay, so that's minus 25.2. Um, okay, so minus 25.2. Okay, excellent. Moving on to the next one. Now, I might have to take all of these down even more, but I'm going to do this instead just because it's hard to get your head around at the start. Okay, so the original uh, four decibels that we took off here, plus the three, is seven. Um, so what are we at? Seven decibels, 24.8. And seven. So that's 31.8. So minus 31.8. Okay, beautiful. On to the next one. 9.3, that's a massive one, okay. 9 uh, plus 4 is 13.3. Uh, so 13, where are we? 13.3. Uh, and then also uh, minus, uh, no, let me do that again, 13.3 and the 18.9. So that's 32.2. So back in there, just double click on it, minus uh, 32.2. So this makes sure that everything is even. Um, so there's there's no reduction here. We may not even be using this channel. I'm not sure, I can't remember. I'm just gonna go through everything anyway for practice. Um, so, so minus 21.7, uh, minus 21.7. So that's that value there, plus the four. Um, and that's the same, minus 21.7. Um, so minus 21.7. And these can be changed as well on down the line, depending on what your mix is like, but uh, this should help you. So 10 and four is 14. Uh, so 14 plus 17.7, all right, 14, 17.7, uh, 31.7, okay, so. Minus 31.7, okay. Um, next one, that's uh, minus 21.7. Let's just take in the four off that again. And 10.9. So is it here? 14, oh, minus, minus 14.9. Beautiful, okay. 
minus 21.7 again. Minus 21.7. So this isn't the most exciting thing that you'll ever do, but it's really, really good practice. Um, minus 24, hand in off. Okay, excellent. So you, I'm sure you're starting to get the hang of this now. So 4 plus the original 4 is 8. Um, so say 8 plus 26.3. 34.3, but it's minus. Um, I don't bother putting the minus in when I'm working this out on a calculator. It's just, there's no point. Just do it afterwards. Uh, 6, so it's 10.5. Um, okay, so that's 32.8. So minus 32.8. Uh, oh. Uh, minus 32.8. Okay. So, and the others, uh, what have we got here? Yeah, we'll get some more stuff there. So, 18, uh, minus 22.3, minus 22.3. Okay, and then the last couple. So there's no reduction there on the channel, so I just have to put in the, the minus four. Minus 25.7. And seven. Okay, beautiful. And then the right. Um, okay, minus 22.7 or thereabouts. Okay. And let's see what else we have. These are the reverbs. These will be fine. Um, you might need to readjust them. But for now, I'm not going to worry about that. So basically, the, the, the reason behind doing this, <clears throat> excuse me, is to make sure now that when everything is at zero within the drums, now this is just the drums so far, um, and this is the hardest one to do. The rest of them only have like one, ch you know, one channel. The drums are difficult. So we've started off uh, with the most difficult thing, to be honest with you, but you need to know where to go and find um, the, the the part where you want to, the, you know, to reduce the gain. In. And basically, you know, it's not here. It's not here, but it's within the actual uh, sampler in this instance uh, so this sampler is actually playing back the sample so we're taking down the volume of that sample so that's the original source of the sound we're taking down that and in turn through the whole uh, track that will reduce the volume so if you were to reduce the volume uh, on down the line you're still going to have a hot signal somewhere you're going to have a distorted signal somewhere so it doesn't make any sense doing that you go right back to the source of the sound you reduce the source of the sound and everything after that should work. Now, you do need to be careful in the sense that if you have set up a compressor or something like that, um, or a gate or a limiter or something, um, you've now changed uh, the, the overall volume of the thing that you're working on. So you might need to go and readjust those things if you've set a threshold because a threshold... Um, will be the same but the amount going into these things will be lower so you might need to address that um, you know if you're pretty far in with your track so keep that in mind have a listen for it and and you know judge it based on on your circumstances so let's have a listen now to the drums so i'm sitting at uh minus nearly minus two decibels which is good but uh let's go on it might change so we're still sitting at uh plus one db so I would need to go back into all of these again now <laughs> and say, I'm going to take another uh, another 10 dB off each one, which is a lot, but I'm going to do it. So what you need to be careful with here as well is noise floors. Now, because with what we're working with, it should be fine. But uh, just be aware that um, every thing that you use, whether it's hardware or software, has a noise floor. And just like when you're working with volumes, if they're too high, uh, you can get distortion. But also if they're too low, what you can do is when you start to uh, bring up that volume, then on down the line, you can also bring up uh, unwanted noise um, or artifacts or hiss or uh, yeah, everything, uh, mainly hardware, um, has a noise floor. But um, yeah, your sound card that you're using or whatever. Uh, may also have it so it's just something to be aware of uh, when you're when you're messing with volumes you don't want it too low you don't want it too high um now there will be something in here basically causing uh the uh this group track here to clip so it could be just one of the tracks so let's have a listen 
So if I reset everything up here, this will tell me what the loudest sound is. So this is just a live kind of readout or measure of the, the peak that comes through each channel. Let's get through the more bizarre parts. Okay, minus 10, minus 16, minus 21, minus 18. Yeah, so they're all, you know, in their own, they're all, uh, yeah, they're all, you know, they're all low enough. Um, well, when I say low enough, they're low, but they're not low enough at the same time. Um, okay, so maybe what I'll do is I'll take 5 dB off everything. So that's minus 35, minus 35, back in again, same thing, but it's quicker now because we don't have to do as much maths. Uh, minus 30. Point two. So I'm just taking 5 dB off everything to try and get this right. So uh, minus 36.8, minus 36.8, beautiful, okay. Uh, the clap, uh, minus 37.2, okay. And this is all um, to basically make sure that when we send everything out to our master, we're not clipping and that we don't have any hot signals anywhere. So minus 26.7. Uh, 26.7, okay, beautiful. And hi hats next, okay, minus, minus 36.7. Halfway there. Now, um, if oh, you can see here, as far as we can go is minus 36. So we might need to uh, readjust this as we go, but that's fine. Um, now we do have gain here as well that we can use um, if needs be. This actually reduces the, the sample itself. This is the volume of the actual um, of the actual sampler itself so you can actually take your gain down here so if you think that the sample is is the potential problem which it can be as well you can take it down there too so this is the absolute original source this is the next in the chain so just keep that in mind as well it could also be that um if we go here and look everything seems to be within the window of uh the sampler so that's why i'm taking down the volume here um but this looks a wee bit it's fine. It's fine. It's okay. Okay. I had, um, okay. Move on to the next one. I'll maybe do a couple like that as well. Uh, when necessary, just to show you how to do that. Um, so say minus 20 on well, that one. Okay. Minus 21. Um, so let's do it with this one. So let's just take five off that minus five, take that down. Um, might actually be handier to do it this way. There's less maths. <laughs> uh, minus five. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll take that one down as well, minus five. Okay, beautiful. So you see the three different ways of doing this now. So um, yeah, let's finish this off as well. Okay, oh yeah, that, that yeah, I'll take that down, minus five. Okay, uh, let's see where we are there. Okay, so um, what do we have? And just the reverbs next. Okay, so let's have a listen now. Okay, so minus six, uh, let's take it onto a busier part. Right, okay, that is a much better, cleaner signal. So, now I know that there's nothing clipping there. I don't mind taking this down a little bit, but uh, we'll see how we go. We also have a gain here. Uh, that we can use. So that basically takes uh, the overall amount down. Um, I didn't want to just take it down here because there was other parts of, um, you know, the the individual tracks within the drum kit that uh, were potentially clipping there and too loud. So it's good to go in and to individual, individually do those. Um, okay, so let's have a wee look here. I just want to check the automation within um, the drums within the volume. So the gain is here, right? So I'm not going to mess with that because I already have that set up to do something. So I'm just going to take another utility in and I'm going to pop that there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take another three decibels off the 
uh, gain within that. So again, just a wee bit more headroom. Um, let's have a listen. Okay, right, so that's nice. Well, let's move on to the next sound. Final noise. Very nice. And I have that down at minus 20 dB. Wow. So let's have a look at what we have. We've got an EQ in here, an auto filter, um, reverb, and then also this compressor. So I've cranked up the, the amounts on this. Um, both well, by 10 and by 8 dB. Let me just take those down a wee second and bring that up. Okay, so that's a better way of working it. No, it's a bit high in the mix, but I'm looking here at all these different. Um, th this is something else that you need to be aware of as well. When just say I'm working on this channel at the minute and I play the track and once this starts working uh, let's go over to the vinyl noise section so the audio goes through the EQ8 it goes through the auto filter and the reverb etc and it gives you a readout of the audio level after each instrument or each uh, audio device that you're using this is good as well because it can kind of show you if, you know if there's clipping at any point um, here there's not which is good um, but it's just something to be aware of um, it's a good thing to, to keep an eye on just in case if you are clipping somewhere uh, keep an eye on these so even if I was to take this this volume right down you can still see down there that the audio is going through so you know that fader doesn't make a difference to the output of uh, the master it only makes a difference to what you can hear um, so it is really really important to treat these as completely different things um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take the vinyl noise down a little um, so maybe just take that down by minus 3 just to have it sit in the mix better yeah not making much of a difference is probably because of the uh, multi-band compressor so let me go in and go to utility and I'm looking at all these signals they're all fine so I'm okay with just taking this down here Yeah, okay, so that's pretty much where I want that there. Okay. Next up. So I'm going to go to the part of the track where there's lots going on. Um, say here. Bring in the next thing. So this sweep is at minus 12. I'm just looking for the actual sweep here. I'm going to highlight everything within that channel. Hold down command. Double click on the first one. I'm going to take everything down by minus 12. Uh, I should show you that actually. So th there's the original sound. And then I'm going to take them all down by minus 12. Now basically what I'd done there was um, I highlighted all of the samples within that channel and then um, you know basically clicked in minus 12 here and that applies it to everything all at once. Um, so that's that's a good move um, and then I'll go back in here now and bring that back to what it should be. So it doesn't affect the mix. Still the same as it was, only the sound is clear and better. Um, next up, let's do the bass. So it's minus 10. Bring that up and take it off wherever we need to take it off. So let's see, what is it? It's audio. So again, I'm going to click and drag. Hold down command. Double click until you see it down here. Minus 10. Just like that. So we're taking the original sound down. So 
uh, we done we didn't do this tape on minus 8.7 let's go into that and see what it is I think it's uh where are we here tape on minus 8.7 oh uh, yes 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 okay right so um basically what this is is this this echo um so what I'm gonna do is just have a wee quick look here what we're doing um so technically what I could do here is at the very end just take it down so utility uh great thing uh this utility minus 8.7 just to give you an idea these are these bars indicate how much I use certain things with Ableton and as you can see there utility is one of the one of the most used things um i use it in everything i really do it has a multitude of different uh functionality but uh yeah it's really really good to use so let's take that now so that's all fine um last couple 14.9 say 15 for argument's sake um now what you need to be aware of as well um let me just do this first of all so uh 15 i said there so this is all audio that i've put in um i must have used some of the hardware that i have i can't remember it's been that long ago uh minus 15. Okay, the next one is a speech minus 4.7 I know that that's going to be uh, audio uh, minus 4.7 so let's see uh, minus 4.7 beautiful okay let's have a look. that It has become extremely plausible that this trip between the maternity ward and the crematorium is what there is to life. And we still have so this is, going this is, into uh, our... Basically, this is peaking. Uh, it sounds too loud, and it is too loud. So let's fix that. Okay, so uh, highlight, command, or, oh, or control. Um, if you're in a Mac or PC, so let's go minus nine. It's just a guess. Uh, let's try it again. I'm extremely plausible that minus this seven. trip between the maternity ward and the crematorium is what there is to die. Minus thirteen. Keep going until it's right. And we still have going into our common sense the 19th century myth which succeeded the ceramic myth in Western history. I call it the myth of the fully automatic model. Okay, so this is minus 7.8. Let me just click on that. Uh, let's go into it. Uh, highlight everything. Command. And it's been weird, so let's do it again. Minus 7.8. Done. Okay. And the last one is this one. Minus 3.4. Okay. Now, I'll mix all these again after this. Um, so, here we go. Here's some. Uh, this is an actual sample brought into a sampler. So, um, wh where do I take down the volume here? Um, well, from show you now minus 3.4 i just needed to double check that that's a good tip as well sometimes you forget uh exactly what the amount is so if you've double clicked the fader uh just press command and z and it'll reappear like so uh or control and z on a pc so let's just do that 3.4 and i'm going to go into the global settings and take 3.4 so what's that three six say seven minus seven so that's me taking down the volume from the source um uh, excellent okay so that's the filter global settings you might find it difficult to find some of the uh uh you know the actual uh gain reduction 
functions within some of the synths or some of the uh, audio effects but um, yeah you do have to find them hopefully I've covered a good few here anyway so let's see where we are here now um, here in the master as well we're at minus 3 dB we'll need to bring that back up to zero as well make sure there's nothing in here other than EQ I might even just take that off Nick myth in Western history I call it the myth of the fully automatic model but let's have a listen Matt extremely plausible that this trip between the maternity ward and the crematorium is what there is to life. And we still have going into our common sense the 19th century myth which succeeded the ceramic myth in Western history. I call it so yeah, that's basically, um, oh, my voice is making that clip. Um, so yeah, that's basically an introduction to gain staging. Um, just be aware that if you're, you know, if you're making music on any doll or any piece of hardware, um, let's just stop that. <laughs> um, yeah, there, there is a starting point for your sound. And when you're gain staging, you need to find that starting point if it's too loud and figure out how it's turned down correctly. So uh, we've looked at how to gain stage audio and uh, some of the instruments within Ableton. And again, we're doing this to have a better over, or a better overall uh, signal quality. And we don't want to be working with any hot signals. Um, so basically, once we put all of these individual channels together uh, through your master track, we want to make sure that it's, it's receiving uh, a nice healthy signal and it's outputting a nice healthy signal as well. Even now, at this stage, this still needs loads more work, um, but that should hopefully give you an idea how to do, uh, or how to at least start gain staging. Um, your friends are these meters here. They will help you um, understand exactly where you are level-wise. Um, and then also, if you're in a group track like this, they're in here as well. So keep an eye on those. Also, uh, utility, Utilities are very, very handy, as I mentioned before. Um, also, the channel faders uh, here uh, will not fix loud sounds. So if you take those down um, to basically stop clipping in your master, you're doing it wrong. You have to go back a step and you have to find out exactly what's generating the sound and, take an, and basically take the volume down from there. Once you do that, you then set this back to zero dB. And that's your... Uh, You'll hear people using the term unity gain. Um, so it's like the sweet spot for audio signals. Um, and that's what this does. You're resetting that back to unity gain um, in a digital sense of the word. Um, and most mixers will have this as well on, on the uh, on the gain within each channel. Um, so yeah, hopefully that helps. If you have any questions or queries, by all means, uh, let me know. Um, this is only part one of gain staging we will do. Lots, lots more. But uh, this will get you going for now. Thank you.